there are more than 2 billion people in the world affected by anemia. The loss in economic growth amounts to more than 50 billion US dollars per year. In simple terms, nutritional anemia is the dietary deficiency of minerals and vitamins essential to the formation of healthy red blood cells. Yet, this rampant health crisis is more complex than it seems and remains one of the leading contributors to the global burden of disease and mortality, especially amongst pregnant women, infants and young children in developing countries. The effects of anemia are not always visible, unlike the potbelly torso of a starving child, which is why it has been so largely neglected. The body needs about 40 or 50 compounds that we cannot make, that they can have to come from the diet, and one of those vital elements is iron. And now the body uses iron for multiple purposes, and among them is to build hemoglobin, which is necessary to carry out the oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. If we don't obtain enough iron and other important nutrients from our food, our bodies don't make enough hemoglobin, which ultimately affects mental and physical capacity, resulting in lethargy, diminished brain and body function, and reduced immunity. Nutrition plays an important role in preventing anemia, and of all the nutrients involved, iron is probably the most crucial. Anemia resulting from iron deficiency is one of the top 10 contributors to the global burden of disease. When deficiency is severe, it can be fatal. The groups that are most at risk are women of childbearing age and more specifically women uh, during pregnancy and uh, during lactation. Uh, they have to have adequate uh, nutrient intake to ensure their own health and to ensure the health of the newborn. During pregnancy, women require vital micronutrients more than they need energy. However, these additional mineral and vitamin needs are seldom attained by diet, especially in low-income countries. There is striking evidence that what happens to a child before age six has a lifelong impact on cognitive performance, socialization, and ability to work. And in particular, uh, nutrition seems to be implicated as one of the key things in the first two years of life, which open the possibility for a child to be well-educated, to be able to uh, respond to that effectively. The harsh irony is that anemia is further compounded by diseases such as malaria, tuberculosis and HIV AIDS. These health burdens are prevalent in countries hardest hit by iron deficiency. Moreover, iron is an essential nutrient for pathogens and so may greatly increase their virulence. In regions where malaria is endemic, iron supplements might even increase the risk of death. It's not just as simple as the food we eat. It should also be considered that disease reduces appetite. Therefore, the more frequently an individual is sick, the more likely they are to be malnourished. The signs of malnutrition may not be outwardly visible. That is why it is commonly known as the hidden hunger. And seen, it impacts negatively on health. In simple terms, disease feeds off iron, poverty feeds off disease, and anemia feeds off poverty. It's a seemingly hopeless and endless cycle. Anemia is complex, and the solution is not just one simple intervention. Although supplementation has a definite role to play, 
The most effective interventions are those that reach as many people as possible. There are two key ways to achieve this. Fortifying commonly eaten staple foods with lacking nutrients. Or home fortification where missing nutrients are added to the plate or bowl of food just before eating. These are globally recognized as being the most cost-effective approaches. There is an urgent need to adopt a wide range of effective control measures if we are to make a real and sustained difference in people's lives. Sadly, it would seem there is limited political will to address the issue of nutritional anemia. Why? Not so much because it's not recognized to be a very important health problem, but because it's recognized to be a relatively insoluble health problem. And unfortunately, those who exercise even some political will to make changes are more drawn to the easy solutions in easy problems. Despite political frailty, there are still organizations who are fighting to ensure that this hidden hunger is not neglected. Founded in 1986 and based on the groundbreaking research of Professor Alfred Sommer of Johns Hopkins University, Sight and Life has supported more than 3,000 projects worldwide. Progress we've made in 15 years, 16 years, has been dramatic. I mean, we are now saving half a million children's lives every single year and, and maybe the same number from going blind. So that's a dramatic improvement. But we still have a long ways to go. The foundations of any real solution begins with the education of developing and first world countries alike drawing government and individual attention to the realities of this health catastrophe. The remedies are cost-effective, and as a unified global community, we need to work together, using knowledge as our weapon in the fight against apathy and ignorance. Together, we can remove the veil of silence that conceals this hidden hunger.